When the Workforce series of printers came out from Epsom, one of the things we struggled with was getting a waste ink tube connected to a recessed tube such as the one in this WF2750. Um, we found a way to make it work, but what we particularly struggled with was how to explain how to make it work. What I've realized is we need to be able to demonstrate this in a way that you can actually see what's going on um, so that you can make use of exactly the same technique yourself. As you can see, we've ripped the outer case for the two sides here of this uh, SX535WD so that we can actually show you what's happening when we're trying to connect a tube to this internal waste ink tube here. Obviously this printer is upside down, but this is your waste ink tube here, okay? You have some excess capacity, but you do not want to pull out like this because you're stretching the tube and also you're running the risk of that tube snapping off of the connection fitting inside on the pump. If you break off the tube internally, that's it, game over. You're not gonna be able to fix that without taking the entire printer apart. What you would normally do is use your forceps to lock off the tube or extend the tube out about a centimeter and then lock it off around about there. That's about the optimum length of tubing that you want sticking out, locked off with your forceps so that you can then act on and, and sort of clean this up. Now, a couple of things you want to be doing. One, you want to be cleaning the inside of that tube with, I've taken a cotton bud here and I've stripped most of the um, cotton wadding off. So this will fit in the tube. And then what I'm gonna do now is basically stick that in there and swab out the inside of the tubing like that. Now I've already done this a few times, so there's actually not a great deal of wasting left in that one, but you want to swab out as much of the wasting on the inside of the tube as you can, because otherwise that lubricates things and makes it easier for the connector to pop out at some point, okay? So you wanna remove as much of that as possible. The next thing to do is disconnect that, get a little bit of kitchen towel, and then clean, clean on the outside of your waste tube. So what you do is get your piece of kitchen towel and then just pinch on the outside and just draw up and move around a little bit, pinch on the side and draw up. Go around the entire thing like that. I mean, you could just do this, just gently pinch around and then wipe the ink off and repeat until you're happy that you've removed most of that waste ink. Now, the reason you do that is when you come to insert your connector into the tube, you want minimal lubrication on the inside of the tube so that this stays in and minimal lubrication on the outside of the tube so that the tube doesn't push into the printer and out of sight where you can't get to it, okay? So you want your waste, your connector to go in approximately to the top of the barb. If you can get your fingers in and into that gap that you know normally exists here, then, then by all means, get your fingers in, hold the tube and push the connector on like that, yeah? If that's an option, do that every single time. But if the hole is too deep, then use your forceps. If it's too difficult, you're a bit fat fingered like I am, and you can't get your hands into that space to hold it, then use your forceps as a brace to get it most of the way in so that it's, yeah, so that it's splayed out the tube like that. That's the best point. So to show you with this piece of clear tubing, you want your barb to go into your tube so that it is to there, okay? Right? Now the, the, the reason for that is if you get it to that level, you can see it's wider, yeah? Down at this side, it's thin. And then use the edges of that hole to actually act as your brace or your, 
your other pair of fingers for you. Like that. Okay. Now, if I've done this right, if I now release the forceps, and what I do now, see, that tube doesn't instantly disappear into the hole. So what I'm going to do now is use that hole as a brace that then forces that tubing onto the barb, pushes it further on to or in rather to the tubing. As you can see there, it's starting to push that tubing further on to the connector. In fact, it's actually pushed it all the way on. I don't know how well you can see that. There you go. That's pushed all the way on. And the way we did that was we used the hole and the flaring action of the barb to basically create a brace out of the hole so that the hole itself forces the barb further into the tubing and the tubing further onto the barb, giving you a good solid connection like that. Anyway, I hope that's been useful by cutting away the sides of the printer. I think we've done a much better job of actually showing you how to access this. And because the scanner in this thing was already broken, I didn't have any compunction. There was no reason to try and keep it intact. This, this thing unfortunately does have to go um, for recycling, but um, it's definitely done a good job in terms of showing all the ways that you can recover your printer, fit external tanks and change pads and all the rest of it, okay? I really would appreciate comments on this. I know that this kind of approach is probably gonna put some people off. I wouldn't blame you, but I'd like to think that we've shown you that it is possible. Um, and if you just take your time a patient and do all the things like cleaning the inside of the tube and the outside of the tube, you will maximize your chances of success. And I've done lots and lots of these printers. I've only had one now where it all went horribly wrong. And that's because I forgot to clean the tube inside and out. If you look here, there's a split in the bit of tubing there. Okay, that's from doing multiple, multiple takes of this entire process. This tube has gotten a little nick in it. It's got a tiny little cut above where I've been clamping with the forceps. Repeated clamping does do that, unfortunately. Not likely to be something you'll see, but something to be aware of. If you've got this scenario where you have this split, you've got two choices. One would be to stop and go to plan B, which is go for replacement waste pads. Don't fit a printer potty, but just replace the pads. The reason I suggest that one as an option is because this, even with the split, would still work with pads, okay? Pads would still work absolutely fine. You could replace the pads, put them back onto the printer, and you wouldn't have any issues. Um, even with the split, the split would be contained because the pads push up against this collar here. So even though the ink would be jetting out at the sides, it would be hitting here and the pads, it would be sealed in, it wouldn't be spilling anywhere. If you wanted desperately to fit a printer potty, you would need to cut above that leak. And the problem is in order to do that, you have got to extend your waste tube even further, which puts even more strain on the tube and potentially you're going to get another leak within a reasonably short period of time. Stressing out the tube like that may not be a good idea, okay? So unless you're prepared to cut this whole section out to get to the waste tube and then extend it in a slightly different fashion, you're gonna want um, to just go with the pads.